The battle for the balance of power in the United States Senate truly never ends. So, since we're now two full months into 2023, we have seen some significant developments in several states, making this the perfect time for a 2024 Senate map roundup. My name is Ryan Guest, and welcome back to the Decision Desk HQ YouTube channel. Last week, Democrats got the best news conceivably possible when Montana incumbent Senator John Tester revealed that he would indeed seek a fourth term. Three times already in his career, Tester has defied the odds and managed to secure narrow upset victories over Republican challengers in this ruby red state. By a one point margin in 2006, then four points in 2012, and four points again in 2018. Tester is one of a trio of Democratic senators, the others being Sherrod Brown of Ohio and Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who are defending seats next year in states that Donald Trump won in 2020. In a 51 to 49 chamber, the Democrats' majority will likely depend on at least two of these three incumbents winning re-election, a perspective made all the more daunting by Manchin's public indecision on whether he will even run again. One potential advantage for Tester would be a messy primary on the Republican side. Among those currently circling the race are Governor Greg Gianforte, Attorney General Austin Knudsen, and both of Montana's congressmen, Ryan Zinke and Matt Rosendale. So long as the GOP does not coalesce around one of these high-profile candidates beforehand, Tester will likely have a significant fundraising advantage going into the general election. In California, incumbent Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein announced that she will not run for another term in 2024. Reporters and constituents have closely scrutinized the 89-year-old Feinstein ever since a December 2020 report revealed that many of Feinstein's colleagues believed she was in the midst of a steady mental decline. More such stories and anecdotes have risen over the last two years, raising the question of whether Feinstein should or even can finish her current term. And as the senator remains silent into 2023, progressive Orange County Congresswoman Katie Porter decided that she was done waiting and jumped into the race. A few weeks later, lead Trump impeachment manager LA Congressman Adam Schiff threw his own hat into the ring. And most recently, longtime Bay Area Congresswoman Barbara Lee formally launched her campaign in late February. The UC Berkeley Institute of Government Studies recently released the first big-name poll of this race in conjunction with the LA Times, which found Schiff, who has been endorsed by former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, slightly ahead of Porter at 22% to 20%. Lee was far behind at 6%, just ahead of another potential high-profile Democratic candidate, Congressman Ro Khanna, at 4%. The poll found most of Schiff's support coming from older Democratic voters from Northern and Central California, while Porter leads among young voters and Southern California residents. Such a divide makes sense as Schiff is the more experienced of the two, serving in the House since 2000. Porter, on the other hand, was part of the 2018 Blue Wave and represents a hotbed of upscale voters in Orange County that's gone from deep red to purple post-Trump. Thus, Schiff is essentially the establishment candidate in this race, as he's relying on the crucial support of longtime mentor Nancy Pelosi. According to many reports, Pelosi has been actively maneuvering Feinstein's exit from the race, while also trying to secure her endorsement of Schiff. Therefore, it could be an uphill battle for Porter, Lee, and anyone else who decides to jump off the Democratic Party's deep California bench to try and claim this open seat. Speaking of open races, the recent retirement announcement from incumbent Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow has set off another scramble in the state of Michigan. While many big names on the left, like Governor Gretchen Whitmer and State Senator Mallory McMorrow, decided to pass on this cycle, among those still seriously considering a bid are Congresswoman Debbie Dingell and Alyssa Slotkin, as well as Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. On the Republican side, 2020 Senate nominee and Congressman John James has already pulled himself out of contention. 
and U.S. representatives Bill Huizenga and Lisa McLean lead a crowded list of contenders, one that also includes the polarizing and unsuccessful 2022 governor nominee, Tudor Dixon. It's also worth keeping in mind that while Michigan is a presidential battleground, Republicans have not won a Senate seat here since 1994, so the race will likely lean blue throughout the cycle. Now, with so few Republican incumbents defending competitive seats in this cycle, Democrats don't really have any truly attractive offensive opportunities. The only one that even comes close is Ted Cruz down in Texas, but as evidenced by Beto O'Rourke's 2022 run for governor, even the strongest Lone Star Democrats, and those are few and far between, are having a tough time making Democratic dreams of a blue Texas come through. Recently, though, we have received a report from the Dallas Morning News that Congressman Colin Alred is taking a look at the race. A former NFL linebacker who won a Dallas House seat in 2018, Allred would likely be the best candidate the party could hope for in this race, and it's not inconceivable to believe that Cruz could be vulnerable. After all, he beat the aforementioned O'Rourke by a narrow 2.6% in 2018. He also hasn't recorded a net positive approval rating since that fateful Cancun flight in February of 2021. That said, it will be an uphill battle for any Democrat in a state that Joe Biden is unlikely to win in 2024. Biden lost Texas by 5.5% to Trump in 2020, meaning that Cruz will have some leeway to run behind the top of the ticket, yet still emerge victorious. The quintessential wildcard of the 2024 cycle is bound to be Arizona where incumbent Senator Kirsten Sinema's move to become an independent sets up a potential three-way contest. Senator Sinema enters the race in a very unique position, an incumbent with a full fundraising chest, yet no real constituency or team to help her. Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego has already won over Sinema's former Silicon Valley donors, as well as most of the party's establishment for his own bid. It's also not clear that Sinema can count on Arizona Republicans to boost her to victory, given she remains in the Democratic caucus. Any Republican nominee could conceivably win in purple Arizona, and most local Republicans probably won't abandon a real conservative like Kerry Lake or Blake Masters for the primarily left of center Sinema. So while she does hold considerable voting power in the Senate at this moment, Cinema's clout is likely to expire on January 3rd, 2025. Moving on, there is a theory discussed among Pennsylvania's top Republicans that the party could have defeated John Fetterman in last year's Senate contest if only Dr. Oz and Donald Trump had not intervened and derailed their supposed strongest candidate, Dave McCormick, who these state Republicans believe was robbed of an opportunity to repeat Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin's trajectory from hedge fund CEO to successful GOP politician. As a result, these same backers are now pushing McCormick to challenge Bob Casey in 2024. Casey, however, represents a far more formidable foe for the PA GOP. John Fetterman had never won a statewide general election on his own before 2022, whereas Bob Casey has done so six times as a auditor general, treasurer, and senator. Moreover, Casey has won his three previous Senate races by 17, 9, and 13 points respectively. And despite a recent prostate cancer diagnosis, Casey has made clear that he does still intend to seek a fourth term. Meanwhile, a recent move by McCormick to offload a pair of Manhattan apartments suggests that he very well could be preparing for another Pennsylvania campaign. Finally, in the state of Indiana, the decision by incumbent Republican Senator Mike Braun to seek the governorship instead of a second term in Washington opened up the first and possibly only Republican seat of this cycle. Congressman Jim Banks quickly jumped on the opportunity, not only declaring his candidacy but also securing the support of Donald Trump and 10 GOP senators. Such a swift move may well have convinced former Governor Mitch Daniels to take a pass on this race, though outgoing Governor Eric Holcomb is still keeping his options open, potentially setting up an intense primary battle in the Rust Belt's reddest state. And that is all for this video, thank you guys so much for watching, please make sure to subscribe to the Decision Desk HQ YouTube channel down below and leave a like on this video while you're at it. Feel free to comment any thoughts, opinions, or suggestions in the comment section down below, and we'll see you next time.